On today's episode of Real Life Pharmacology, I'm going to cover hydrocodone and acetaminophen. Common brand names here, uh, Norco, Lortab, Vicodin, that you may see uh, providers and other healthcare professionals use interchangeably there. Uh, there is some slight differences there, but uh, in general, you want to understand what the dose of hydrocodone is, uh, as well as acetaminophen. Most common dosages there is hydrocodone 5 milligrams with 325 milligrams of acetaminophen or 10 milligrams of hydrocodone with acetaminophen 325 milligrams. Now hydrocodone uh, is an opioid so its mechanism of action is it is a mu opioid receptor agonist. That's how it has its activity as far as analgesic relief. And in rare cases, I can't say I see it used very often clinically, um, but in rare cases you may see it used as an antitussive to uh, suppress cough. With hydrocodone, we've also got acetaminophen combination. I'm not going to talk about acetaminophen at length here. Um, you've just got to remember to really educate your patients about that acetaminophen component. And if patients are taking regularly scheduled acetaminophen for pain relief and or if they are using other combination products with acetaminophen, uh, we have to remember um, that this combination can add to that effect. So um, again, I, I talk about acetaminophen in a in a totally separate podcast that's already been done, so I'll refer you back to, to that one uh, to get a bit, little bit more detail uh, on acetaminophen specifically. So let's get into adverse effects a little bit because there certainly are quite a few uh, that can happen anytime we're using an opioid. And again, I'm going to focus more so on the hydrocodone here uh, versus the acetaminophen. So first thing I think of uh, as far as adverse effects with hydrocodone and opioid, uh, you know, as I'm creating, working on this podcast, the opioid crisis and all the uh, press coverage is, is in full swing as far as that goes. So you've got to remember hydrocodone can lead to the risk of addiction and dependence. And with that, um, we really, really want to do our best uh, if we have to use hydrocodone for pain relief, we want to do our best to limit that uh, to a very short time frame, if at all possible. And some of those, some of the other side effects uh, in association to that addiction and dependence, uh, we've got sedation. Uh, that can definitely happen with these medications. And if we're in severe pain, that sedative type effect uh, probably is a, a good thing. But, you know, particularly in, in combination with other medications, which I'll talk about um, in the uh, upcoming drug interaction section, uh, we can get overly sedated. And in the event of opioid overdose or getting too much of that medication, um, that can be a, a big, big issue. Uh, sticking with the theme of overdose, if we get too aggressive with dosing, uh, the biggest risk of opioid overdose is generally respiratory depression where it basically stifles breathing and that respiratory rate will slowly decline. Uh, again, this isn't terribly common with you know low doses of hydrocodone, but if you've got a patient that's taking uh, other opioids with hydrocodone, uh, that can maybe have an additive effect. But again, you know, starting at the low initial doses with hydrocodone, the likelihood of, of that alone causing significant respiratory depression is pretty low. We always need to think about it, but um, it, it uh, yeah, isn't of high, high concern if we're using low, 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 low doses. Another possible adverse effect, uh, dizziness you got to look out for. A stomach upset can definitely happen. Uh, pretty much with all of the opioids, so nausea and vomiting, things like that, uh, can certainly take uh, hydrocodone and acetaminophen combination with food uh, to kind of ease that stomach upset if a patient does have problems with that. 
Constipation is another big major opioid side effect, um, not just specific to hydrocodone, but certainly can happen from hydrocodone as well. So we got to remember that we often use laxative with these medications. So a combination of a stool softener and a stimulant uh, is uh, pretty commonplace with the use of opioids, or at least monitoring for that constipation. Meiosis is another sign of potential uh, opioid toxicity or getting too much opioid. Uh, so meiosis is the shrinking of the, the pupil. So remember, pinpoint pupils uh, is another potential uh, outcome adverse effect with using opioids and, and particularly too much uh, opioids. Now, I do want to mention chronic use of, of hydrocodone and, and opioids in general. Uh, when we use opioids for a longer period of time, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks plus, we can start to uh, become tolerant to the medication. And we can also start to develop um, dependence on that medication. And that can certainly lead into addiction risk as well. Uh, I'm not going to cover that too much in this episode. But um, with that dependence, patients can go through withdrawal symptoms when the medication is reduced and or stopped. So we definitely need to, to remember that in our patients on opioids. So withdrawal symptoms, I've seen uh, anxiety, insomnia. Uh, stomach upset can happen, sweating can happen. Um, so those are a few common uh, signs and symptoms of uh, opioid withdrawal. And in anybody reducing and or discontinuing these medications, that certainly uh, can happen. Now I did want to mention I, I've got a lot of clinical pearls as far as opioids as well as case studies, drug interactions, things like that. Um, in two of my books, Pharmacotherapy, as well as The Thrill of the Case. And both those you can easily find on, on Amazon. I think you'll find them uh, highly, highly uh, useful in uh, preparing yourself for studying for board exams, as well as just uh, rounding out your healthcare education and your uh, medication uh, expertise. So uh, Pharmacotherapy by Eric Christensen, PharmD, and uh, The Thrill of the Case uh, by myself as well. Uh, two good books that you should definitely uh, check out if you're looking to learn more about medications and, and medication safety. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up on, on drug interactions with hydrocodone. And I, I always, uh, wor I, when I work with students, I definitely remind them of uh, opioid conversions. And if we get into that discussion, uh, you cannot uh, take an opioid conversion um, you need to take it with a grain of salt is what I'm trying to say. Uh, opioids are, are not perfect as far as that dosage conversion. And genetics can play a, a big role in that as well as the potential use of other medications that can inhibit or alter enzymes that uh, break down these medications and or activate these medications. So with that, looking into the kinetics of hydrocodone specifically, there's a really, really important enzyme at play here, and that enzyme is CYP2D6. Now, CYP2D6 converts hydrocodone to hydromorphone. If you're familiar with other medications, hydromorphone is actually dilot, brand name Dilaudid, and it is actually much more potent than hydrocodone. So in the body, hydrocodone gets absorbed and then gets metabolized to hydromorphone. And hydromorphone has more potent activity than hydrocodone. Now, you can think of a couple different things that can come into play here. So genetics, so if you've got a rapid metabolizer at CYP2D6, that's going to create hydromorphone faster and create more of it. So that could potentially lead to an increased response. If you've got a slow metabolizer, or in the case of a drug interaction, if you've got a CYP2D6 inhibitor 
paroxetine, bupropion are a couple classic examples that I see commonly used. If that happens, you may see a reduced response from hydrocodone. So when we talk about morphine equivalents, and I would strongly suggest you to go look online, look at uh, morphine equivalent dosage table or something along those lines, and see what the approximate equivalencies are for morphine compared to hydrocodone, compared to uh, oxycodone, compared to codeine. It's good to have a ballpark idea with those. But you got to remember that we can't, you know, automatically convert a patient from one to the other and expect the exact same response. It doesn't always work that way. And drug interactions, as well as genetic variations, can cause different responses uh, to different opioids. So just wanted to, to point that out. A couple uh, classic drug interactions with hydrocodone there I wanted to mention. Uh, in addition, other drug interactions, you've got to remember sedating agents and CNS depressants. I think of uh, anticholinergics, older skeletal muscle relaxants. Um, certainly other opioids can have an additive effect, um, causing increased opioid side effects like I talked about earlier. Uh, another sedating type medications, uh, any type of sleeper, so ambiens and things of that nature. Also, benzodiazepines um, can actually increase the risk of respiratory depression as well as that CNS depressant effect. So I think that kind of wraps up hydrocodone for today. Uh, definitely one of the top 200 drugs, which I've got as a free PDF, 31-page download. Um, good, good study guide of really highly testable pearls. If you're a nursing student, pharmacy student, um, pharmacist that wants to, you know, quiz students or uh, med student um, ad advantageous for all all uh, healthcare professionals, I think. And I really tried to highlight really important stuff you're going to see in clinical practice and likely be tested on it in uh, various board exams. So reallifepharmacology.com, uh, subscribing to the podcast, will get you that PDF for free. So that's what I have for you today. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Leave us a review rating on iTunes. Greatly, greatly appreciated. And um, take care. Hope you enjoyed the show. And thanks for listening.